Myself, I love Alfredo pasta, um, real flavorful. Um, for other people, I like to allow them to tell me exactly what they like. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'll put a twist on it. So if they say they've never had Brussels sprouts, I'll give them Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. uh, if they've never had, um, let's say, what's one thing that people say they've never had before? Uh, sweet potatoes, mm -hmm. the way I do them. Mm -hmm. Then I'll provide for them. So I just try to give people things that they've never had before so they can actually say, wow, I've never had it, but you know, mm -hmm. I actually do like this. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And last question. If you could only eat one more thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? One more thing. Just one thing for the rest of your life. <laughs> kind of crazy, though. I would say shrimp and grits, though. Really? That's definitely one of my favorites. <laughs> for the rest of your life. Yeah, for the rest of my life, I could eat shrimp and grits. Or grits, any type of way, with any type of protein on okay. top. Some type of oxtail and grits, uh, short ribs and grits, uh, lobster and grits. Okay. I just actually made that for the first time this week. Oh, my goodness. It was good? Yeah, <laughs> okay, so um, I like to have people on the show who are like from this area who are D.C. natives. Mm -hmm. So please tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. Because I'm always interested to see, like, okay, so how did you get your start? Like, what were you mm -hmm. like when you were younger? So, yeah. stuff like that. Born and raised in Mount Rainier, you familiar mm -hmm. with it? Mm -hmm. So Mount Rainier was a place I was born and raised. Uh, went to Mount Rainier Elementary, Hydesville Middle, Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. You familiar with it? In Greenbelt. Uh, attended there for I high school. I am from here. I know all these yeah. places. Hey, look, you know, I just got okay, I know stuff. everything you're saying. <laughs> uh, then I went to Bowie State mm -hmm. over there in Bowie, um, BSU, Bulldogs. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, you know, I moved around. Once I moved out of my parents' house at 19, I lived in Bowie. I lived in Laurel, on the Howard County side, the PG County side, and the Anne Arundel County side. Mm -hmm. And now I live in Upper Marlboro. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely local. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, how were you, like, in your early years? Like, did you used to cook then? Or, like, how did mm -hmm. that whole thing start? Because I know, um, I used to be a guy who, like, actually just telling me now, like, yeah, I'm actually about to finally start cooking. But you've been cooking your entire life. Like, ever since <laughs> you was a little kid, you've been cooking, and now you say, oh, maybe I should cook. Yeah. So, like, how was that for you? Um... When I first got my first key, I was nine years old. My mm -hmm. mom let me start coming home, and she would tell me I could only eat, like, the Oreos or the Doritos. And, you know, I was a mischievous kid, so I would, I seen her cook eggs and stuff for us for breakfast. I'd look in the refrigerator. Uh, I'd make myself scrambled eggs. I heard her wash the thing out before she got home. <laughs> and one day, I washed it, but she could still smell the oh. scrambled eggs in the house. And she was like, you cook something? And, you know, I told her, yeah, I did. But, um... You know, my passion came at that point in time where I realized I didn't want, you know, junk no, food that was already there. I wanted to make what I wanted to make. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so I started with, what was that? Like I said, nine years old. And uh, over time, you know, I was 
cooking food for myself. And, you know, when I moved out, I couldn't get my parents' food. So fast food has never really been something I really desired. So mm-hmm. I would always cook for myself. I cook for my lady friends, my guy friends when they would come over. So that, that's how it really started. So. so what would you say, like, when you were younger, like, other than just, like, cooking, like, stuff for, like, actual to, to sustenance, to, like, survive? Did you probably, like, figure out, like, when you got to a certain age, like, you know, I actually think I kind of like to do this. Like, this is when I really feel like mm-hmm. this is my dish. I don't even know I'm, like, 15 or whatever. Like, this is when I really started feeling like, mm-hmm. Maybe I like like to cook. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, of course, when I was coming home as like 15, 16, I was making full-fledged meals. Like, I was making fried chicken mm-hmm. at, at 15 for myself, not really for anybody else. And you know, my mom wouldn't really have no problem with it. So, like I said, yeah, I gradually started with the scrambled egg. Mm-hmm. So, that it's always something special about the scrambled egg to me. But, um, you know, as time went on, I'm making fried chicken. I'm, I'm, I'm broiling fish. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, roasting broccoli. Like I said, I'm, I'm 14, 15 years old yeah. making these full meals. So when my parents would come home and they make spaghetti on Tuesdays or tacos or whatever the case may be, and I'm like, I'm not hungry. Because I've already <laughs> I've ate. already cooked. Yeah, I've already made the food. <laughs> you know, and they would notice, you know, because they was going to grocery shopping and they would see, didn't I have some salmon in here? Or did, you didn't did, tell them? You didn't hear cooking no, all I'm this food? I'm just in here making stuff because, you know, through trial and error, yeah. I knew, okay, do it this way and and that's how a lot of things that you know that's how I realized to make certain things certain ways yeah I'm like, okay I can make it this way I can boil um, cabbage or I can saute cabbage you know things like that and that mm-hmm. matter so um yeah you know I've, I've really I've been doing this for a long time <laughs> <laughs> you know the wrong way and the right way mm-hmm. so with or without permission nice yeah good to know <laughs> so Okay, so let's say, like, you are all grown up now, and, like, I guess you were out of college. So mm-hmm. that's when you really started to decide, like, that you wanted to, I guess, be a chef. Like, mm-hmm. how did that whole process happen? Like, when you are now professionally doing this, like, mm-hmm. now? Because uh, when I went to Bowie State, I was studying sociology, criminal justice. Okay. I wanted to be a forensic scientist. And still, to this day, I still watch forensic files and love shows where I have to try to figure out stuff. But that's not the passion. You know, that's not something I truly love. Mm-hmm. I get paid to cook. And it doesn't even feel like, you know, I'm working. Yeah. And, and I enjoy every minute of it. But I would say probably around, like, like I said, 19, 20, when I finally moved out. Mm-hmm. And I'm cooking and I'm preparing these meals. And people are like, this is amazing. You know, I started studying this. Okay. I, you know, of course, I watch Food Network. And, you know, you, you watch YouTube. And I'm, I'm reading endless books on recipes and different cuisines from different countries. And, you know, that that's something that I really, I was like, this is something I really had to pursue. So, 2009, started a catering company. Uh, and it was initially called De Nero's Catering and Cuisine. Okay, that's well, my middle that. name. Oh, okay. My middle name is De Nero. Um, I ultimately changed it because I was like, people kept thinking De Nero was money. And, you know, then I had to explain my middle name. So I was like, let me just change it. Chef Anthony Events. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's under an umbrella where I can provide you with a uh, pastry chef. I can provide you with DJ, florist. And, you know, I built a relationship with people uh, in these different uh, avenues. So, um, and of course, I do the catering. Yeah, I'm 10 years in. <laughs> 10, 10 years? 10 years in. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 10 years in. So mm-hmm. how would you say that, like, this experience has been for you for 10 years? Because I've spoken to people, and, like, one of the big things that I like to have, like, on the show is, like, okay, I started from this, and, you know, like, this is, like, the process that I went through. So, like, how has it been? So you started with your, you know, other business, and now you're like, okay, I'm going to brand myself, and it's going to be my name. Mm-hmm. Like, how has this journey been? Like, did you start, like, food truck or, like, in your kitchen? Or, like, how was that process? It's really one of those things that, you know, if in, when in any business, you really have to be fully dedicated to what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So when people start a business, I'm happy for them starting that specific business. But if it's not something you're truly passionate about, it's really, it's really honestly pointless. Yeah. But I was really passionate about this. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it wasn't always easy. You know, I started out doing maybe one event every three to four months. So mm-hmm. one, one event a month. That's really? it, from that point in time. Like, no, back then, when I first started, I probably did one event that whole year. Oh, but it's like, well, you did one event a month, that's good. No, no one event that whole year. <laughs> one event a year, and then, yeah. you know, people were, you know, I'm still learning. So, yeah. really, everything, I feel like it comes in God's timing. Mm-hmm. Let's fast forward to year five, which is 2014. Mm-hmm. Uh, one event a month, okay. which is fine, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm still learning, okay, the cost of this and, you know, what 
what can I purchase at this price to be able and what how much food can I purchase so I'm not wasting food then I'm learning by, by year six okay if I played it this way you know if I put line all these foods up, I put all the proteins at the end but I put all the carbs in the beginning so uh -huh. people know to take more of this and I'm buying small plates so okay. that they can put smaller portions on the plate then by year <laughs> seven I'm like okay if I ride to the event an hour and a half ahead of time mm -hmm. then I know Okay, black people always late. I can, you know, at least have everything set up. And okay, the event starts at seven thirty, but everybody's not gonna get here till eight thirty. So I make mm -hmm. sure all the food's hot. So I make sure I start really, really cooking around yeah. eight o'clock, so that I have everything done by eight thirty. You know, and just just paying attention to certain things like that, and you really still learn. Yeah. The the entire craft and you know the entire business every day. Yeah. And, I mean, nothing's the same. So. Um, I mean, I really, I'm, I'm always learning something and trying to, you know, just trying to school myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so you're self-taught, obviously. It's yeah. Like, so like, mm -hmm. have you decided like throughout this process, like to go and get any like, um, you know, technical actual training, or like you do everything, like you read books and you watch, yeah. and you kind of just on the fly when you go. Yeah, I mean, everything's on the fly. You know, I don't mind any type of uh, in school training. I want to become a ultimately long-term a nutritionist. Okay. I'm not sure if you know, I do these types of juices. Mm -hmm. So. I've been studying this on my Yeah, I follow on social media. I mean, <clears throat> every story is, for at least like the last couple months, yeah. has been like dropping off detox yeah. juice. <laughs> and, you know, doing detox juices where people are losing weight, they're gaining energy, they're curbing their appetite, they have no desire for bad foods anymore. And it's because there's certain recipes and certain foods, I'll give you that. Uh, that <laughs> are you, you know, is this an explicit? Yeah. I'll give you one of the recipes, though. <laughs> the beet juice okay. is one of the most... Uh, underrated juices that's on the market really yeah people think oh i haven't eaten beets all my life so i'm not going to eat them but beets if, if you take one of my beet juices right now and i know that you don't suffer with high blood pressure at yeah. least i don't think you do now if you drink one eight ounce of my beet juice mm -hmm. and you test your blood pressure it would be at a normal state in three minutes really yeah from one eight ounce of it so how did you like jump into that. How did you know like that was something that you wanted to do? Well, I've been juicing for five years for myself. Okay. Um, at one point in time, I was a vegetarian, vegan. Well, I still ate eggs, so I was a vegetarian. <laughs> um, so with that, I was still juice. You know, mm -hmm. celery, cucumbers, carrots, beets, honey, lemon, ginger, turmeric, different combinations of that. Mm -hmm. um, I just happened to post online, and somebody was like, "How much?" And I just like, "Okay, I'll sell it to them." <laughs> but then I started. I was like, "Let me just bundle a package and see what people say." And people can't access a, you know, a local person who can provide True. detox juices and, you know, in the quantities and as fast as it can. You call me today, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Yeah, you but know, then you bring it to them in. too. I'm bringing it to you. I'm going to explain everything to you from beginning to end, and it works. It's not a scam. It's not like, I don't know what other stuff is out here. <laughs> and there's no filler. You know, uh -huh. it's exactly what I'm telling you it is. Um, and then you see your friends are doing it. You know, it's just like, you all can do it together. You can do it with your husband. You can do it with your you know, your, your best friends or your co-workers, whatever. So I'm just here to be able to provide people a healthier lifestyle. So, so nice. So mm -hmm. I know you you mentioned like that you were personally are healthy. So like you wrote some books and stuff, I think, mm -hmm. about this. Mm -hmm. So like let's talk about like your books. And like now I guess you say Chef Anthony in the last like what, three to four years has three been years. like I think very, you know, successful. So mm -hmm. like what are your books and like how did those come about? And like mm -hmm. what interviews have you done really? And what has been like your favorite and most exciting ones so far? Um, the first book was called Hashtag Chef Ant Wild, which is a hashtag I use on Instagram. And in there is a mac and cheese recipe is the one that I made for you today. And the second one is called Ashton East, which is for my daughter. Um, she was two years old. I started her with real food at four months old. And, you know, the only people really were doing that is like our grandparents. Or so I was going to say, did they yeah. say that you give people this baby look, food? People looked at me, look at me <laughs> crazy like you're not supposed to give it to her until she gets teeth. Yeah, like, like, nine months? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to give her solid food, butternut squash, avocado, mixed with breast milk, and, you know, just match it around and, you know, just feed it to her and see how she adapts to it. And mm -hmm. that's why to this day, you know, she eats lamb chops and, you know, <laughs> deep fried lobster tail. You know, she, I let her try everything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, one thing she doesn't like are any of those detox juices. Oh, see? <laughs> she will. She refuses. Like, if the juice is not, it doesn't look like apple juice mm -hmm. or water, she's not drinking it. Okay. If it's green <laughs> or purple, she's like, what I, is don't it? Want, I don't want this. <laughs> but um, third book is called Meal Prep's New Leftovers, mm -hmm. which is basically, of course, meal prep 
is the new name for leftovers. But um, you know, people don't realize, you know, you just put it into a meal prep container, you call it meal prep, but it's really a you leftover it meal you made yesterday. <laughs> um, and it basically a step by step guide on how to meal prep mm-hmm. efficiently. So um, those are three books and they're on Amazon right now and Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, those those books are on there and you know, moving forward though, I do definitely want to um, uh, have a juice bar slash lounge cafe. Type really? Of, um, working on it. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Nice. That'll be like interview 2020, 2021. Yeah, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That'll be nice. Oh, that's exciting. So as mm-hmm. far as like the books, I'm sure the books have like gained you some like you know, like notice, like have oh, you yeah. gotten any like interviews from this? And like, mm-hmm. um, I think the most recent one I saw you do, I think it was like Sister Circle. So mm-hmm. let's talk about the fact that whenever I turn on Fox 5 in the morning, my days <laughs> and I'm getting dressed, it's like, hey, check out this over here. Yep. So, like, how has that whole thing happened? Is that you? Is it a publicist? Like, with that? It's all me. Um, pretty much just reaching out to certain people, getting rejected, you know, not hearing from anyone, basically, mm-hmm. the rejection. Um, and then finally, one day, just being reached out to two days before New Year's. 2015, hey, can you come on here and show us how to meal prep? Why not? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, sure, I got two days prepared, never been on TV before, you know, like that. And uh, going on there, explaining everything on how, how I meal prep, what a person should do, how they should make a list. And that's what made me say, okay, I should write this next book. And it mm-hmm. took me an entire year to give people the exact steps. But in the meantime, you know, going on, every time I would do something profoundly, like writing the other book, I would go on there. They had me come on there for Thanksgiving to tell people, show people how to make uh, pie crust from scratch. Mm-hmm. Um, they had me come on there when Donald Trump did his correspondence dinner to basically do a parody of how he likes to put ketchup on his <laughs> on everything. Oh my ketchup! Uh, yeah, a one sauce on his steak, and they made me. They let me come on there, and you know, we, we just basically made fun of him for that. Um, <laughs> I went on there, of course, for this latest book, meal prep, mm-hmm. his new leftovers, and you know build a relationship with them and then, you know, reaching out to other places like Sister Circle, I reached out to them. It was like, hey, you got a market open, I see you got a nice kitchen, I'll be down there. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, come on down. Um, and that was in Atlanta, Georgia. Channel 7, uh, WJLA, real nice people over there, reached out to them. They said, sure. You went on there a few times. So, really, publicist is cool, but me, you, as you see and everything I told you, I'm just so hands-on. I like to reach out, I like to talk to people, so. How has that been for, like, your family and friends? Because I know, like, being from here, and, like, a lot of times, like, when we do have people who are from here, they don't stay, which is, like, a lot of the purpose of this show. Like, we have a lot of talent here and a lot of people who do things, but if they are from here, they always move somewhere else. They feel like it can kind of jump off there. So mm-hmm. how has it been, like, still being here and being local and your family and friends? Like, hey, like, I just saw you in the news, but I can maybe see you down on your street, like, walking around yeah. and, like, interacting with people. or like, oh. Baby's like, oh, look at Anthony on the news. Like, how's that been? Now, you definitely notice it's, it's like a more higher respect level that people have for you. Like, even even your family. Mm-hmm. Like, they'll go from, yeah, you, you Hollywood now. You know, no, nah, I'm not Hollywood. Nah, I'm, I'm still the same guy who you can still text. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, you text now to this day, and I'm still going to respond. You yeah. know? And just always remain humble because, like I said, I've watched myself, you know, gain this through hard work. But, like, I know the Lord can take it from you in an instant, you know, because yeah. I've seen people rise to the top and fall back down. You're like, quickly. Yeah, I'm talking. About, I'm talking about celebrities, rappers, entertainers, and you're like, dang, I forgot they made that song, <laughs> you know. But yeah. at one point yeah. in time, they were really hot, mm-hmm. you know. And you just never thought that they would fall off, and I'm just like, that could be me. So as long as you remain humble, yeah, you know, they they always never they never fall off. So. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so far, like, with the success stuff that you had and, like, you're constantly trying new things, what would you say, like, your favorite, like, clients have been and, like, your favorite experiences thus far? Because I imagine from, like, what, 10 years, like, you've had, like, an array of experience. What would you say would be your favorite? My favorite? I like everyday working people. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, celebrities are cool, you know. But they, they, they pay money the same way the next person, or well, sometimes they don't pay money or feel like they're entitled to. Because I've had celebrities write me and ask me for meal prep and ask me for events. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm like, hey, hold on, I heard this name before. And I would go, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you're a Latin singer. You know, and I'm like, so I'm corresponding, and here's the price, and no response. So I'm like, okay. So I don't get to necessarily meet you or do the event, mm-hmm. 
but in a sense, I really don't want to do it because you thought that I was going to do this for free because of Ain't that crazy, though? No, no, you got a, the money. It's a and lot. And you don't want to pay. It's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I don't got no money. And I'm like, okay, well, this, let me write this down. Let me save my money. Pay this I'm talking about like, multiple millions of followers. And I have seen you travel and yeah. events. And, you know, okay, you, you're uh, IG. What do they call those women? Influencer. Uh, mo- yeah, influencers and models. <laughs> models. Like, okay. <laughs> But I still have to charge you one thirty five for the meal, <laughs> like, you know. But it's still the same price. Though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and you know, it's not really always about the money, but I mean, really. I mean, it's it, a business too, and but it's still like c- celebrities don't move. Me. I like everyday yeah. working class people because we're all human, and we all, you know, we work hard for yeah. what we have, and you know, there's no freebies out here. You work hard to get your money to pay for a service from a small black business. Just like me, because the same way I go to a small back business to support them, and I'm not gonna ask them for a discount. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy to you though? Like, I felt like you know, with like we know we have an event planning company, whatever, mm-hmm. and it's like people who know us, I feel like always have something to say about the prices of the stuff that we mm-hmm. have, and like we try very hard to make sure we're like matching the market and all that. Mm-hmm. But then they'll go to someone else that they don't know, and then they'll tell them an astronomical price, and it's just like, oh, but this is what it is, and you pay it. But because mm-hmm. you know me, or because you know that we're a small black business, mm-hmm. it's like. You don't want to do it. Have you if experienced I was, a lot if of If I that? was in Tyson's 2 with a restaurant and you knew me, you would say, hey, I can't get a discount. But you wouldn't walk into that Maggiano's and say, yeah, can I get a discount? Or well, what's one of those high-end restaurants? Uh, you would not walk into RPM downtown and ask for a discount. Mm-hmm. And ask, can I get a discount on this bottle? But you'll, you'll ask your own brother, the one who looks like you, yeah. for a discount. <laughs> and that's a problem. Yeah. You know? Or like a clothing store, you'll ask for a discount from a brother, but you won't walk into that Gucci store mm-hmm. or that Bally store and ask for a discount on them six hundred dollars shoes. Yeah. You'll spend six hundred on the shoes, but you won't spend two hundred dollars on on your own brother's shoes, mm-hmm. and that's a problem. It is in our own community, you know. As as one, like we don't feel like we're valued high enough. Mm-hmm. You feel like the other man is yeah. more, you know, more valuable than ourselves, mm-hmm. and they know that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with your working class folks. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite one that you've done for people who are just like us? <laughs> my working class folks, what's my favorite event? Mm-hmm, that you've done. Hmm. It's probably been so many. <laughs> it, I mean, it really, it really is a lot of them. Um, I've done slumber parties for, for women. And, you know, I mean, the, all, all my events are fun. <laughs> no, <laughs> I so, imagine. I mean, that one stuck out because, uh, I mean, uh, we really put on our Sunday's best, you know, put on her dress clothes, and I, you know, my me and my team, and um, uh, what, 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 let me, I want to find one for you. Uh, I can't because I, I enjoy all of them, mm-hmm. and and this this is probably the best example I can give you. The same way I would cook shrimp and grits or oxtail and grits for you is the same way if you were sitting right here and I was sitting right here with Michelle Obama, I would make the same exact way. Mm-hmm. I treat you and I treat everybody the same because we're all human. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm providing it on my name. Yeah. Because sure. Chef Anthony Vince is under that umbrella and with it being under that umbrella, like, it's attached to my name. Yeah. So if I'm going to prepare it for you, I'm going to prepare it to my best of my ability. Yeah. So you can say it tastes good, she say it tastes good. It doesn't mean more that it comes from the first lady or that it doesn't come from you. I just appreciate that someone says that it tastes good. You know, and of course it does taste good. So. <laughs> of course it does taste yeah. good. <laughs> mm-hmm. So over these last 10 years, what would you say has been like your like the most challenging thing and like what you've like learned the most and one of the most exciting experiences? Because every like every single person I feel like if there's a person who you interview, a person that you like meet and they say like I didn't have any problems, or I didn't have any challenges, or like the ones who always like, oh, I'm self-made, I'm this and that, and I'm like, okay, but I, I mean, I feel so hard about saying the word self-made, because it's like, yeah, you might have done it yourself, maybe you might have started mm-hmm. with you, but there's always people somewhere that did something for you, and even if it's in like the smallest way. It's mm-hmm. so like, what would you say like you've experienced as far as challenges and like, you know, kind of triumphs for you? Um, For me, stumbling blocks was pretty much dealing with like understand and getting to the point where I understand that uh, you can create a whole entire menu, you can talk to somebody on the phone back and forth, and if your price doesn't match their budget, they're not gonna go with you. You know, and just realize you won't ever step away from that. And I had I realized that probably like year four, year five, mm-hmm. that and I can filter through, I can read an email like, Hey Anthony, um, I'm interested in an event. How much do you charge for 
50 people to do this baby shop. I could look at that and I could tell they're not going to hire me. And <laughs> you I, did, tell. If I, do, I know that this person is going to be so difficult. Not you right. know why? Because they left out everything. They didn't tell me how much food they wanted. What they wanted. What they wanted. <laughs> They didn't tell me. They didn't tell me anything. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't tell you nothing. People and they want a price. Okay, so I can deal with. Hey, Anthony, I had fifty guests. I will, here's a menu that I'm looking for, or at least a menu around this. I have a budget of this amount. Can you tell me what type of um, what what can you do with me? Can we work with this? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, at least you gave me something to work with. Yeah, and that person is the toss up. You know, just being able to, I can read an email and tell the seriousness of yeah. an individual, you know, for an event. That way, I'm like, I don't really, you know. Now, there's always somebody who will throw you a loop, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, I don't know, they're serious. And then they end up being serious. You're like, oh, wow. So, they really were serious the whole uh-huh. time. So, um, I think that was that was really something that frustrated me. Because at first, I'm sitting there responding. They're like, you send me a menu? I'm making a menu. And then, no response. I don't want to work. Yeah. And at one point in time, I'd be like, hey, uh, Miss Miss Johnson, just following up, just fine. And no email back. And I'd be like, why didn't she write me back? You know? Oh, I started taking it personal. Yeah, I used to take it personal because I'm like, I put all this effort into it. And then I got all these menus sitting right here. And then, of course, out of the 10, it'd be like two people who were serious. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Now I'm just like this. I've asked you enough questions so I know whether you're serious or not. And if I ask you enough questions, you'll either stop responding or you'll answer the questions the right way. So I'll make you more serious. Mm-hmm. So that, that's something that, you know, I've learned how to control my own, control our conversations. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> and your triumphs, you would say? That was a, oh, oh. Let's do this. <laughs> I know, that was a challenge. Yeah, so that you was learned. a challenge. <laughs> um, being able, like I said, stated earlier, being able to, do the research to find certain people to put me in these different positions to be able to be on the TV to get certain exposure. Mm-hmm. You know, those exposures help you to sell more books and uh, build different relationships and, uh, you know, branch out to be able to go to different, you know, television shows. So, um, and being able to do that on my own, so I'm like, okay, so I worded it this way. That might sound like a little selfish. Okay. Uh, if I come on this show, uh, I have books for everybody. And then they be like, yeah, sure. So we'll, we'll see you soon. Or, hey, how's your availability next week? So, you know, you can't just come in just asking for something, you know, because people want something in return, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I had to make it beneficial for everybody. Yeah. So just no, learning that and seeing that it actually works. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what type of advice would you give somebody who wants to start their own business or even somebody who wants to get into, like, the cooking field here? Because, mm-hmm. like I said, as much business as we can have here and keep mm-hmm. here with people – for us that look like us would be mm-hmm. ideal. I mean, no shade to anybody else, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, what would you tell like them? Like, what would you be your advice for them? Like, if they wanted to start something like this, um, definitely make sure there's something that you love. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't love it, you'll you'll be cooking today and doing lashes tomorrow. So, <laughs> I mean, which, which is fine if you like to do both. I mean, but I always say just zone in on one thing that you totally love to do and focus on it mm-hmm. and learn it and continue to learn and continue to learn more and more. Um, but like I said, first you have to learn it, and then you, I mean, you have to love it, then you have to learn it, and you have to continue to execute it, and then you have to find out what separates you from the next person, okay. next man or next woman. You know, you may have to look at other people in the area or other people outside the area and be like, okay, so they, uh, they, they, they like to do rustic style cooking. They like to do this. Okay. And they kind of look like me a little bit. So I want to, you know, I want to brand myself this way mm-hmm. because I feel like everybody even like black male chefs in our area all of us look alike you know as black men but we all bring something different to the table you know mm-hmm. cooking style the way we look the way we dress the way we speak the way we present ourselves and that's what you know either gravitates certain people to certain people you know mm-hmm. so and, and, and that's a beautiful thing so you know being able to bring yourself a certain way okay so mm-hmm. okay so 2019 chef Anthony mm-hmm. I heard a little bit about this juice bar so yeah. What can we expect from you this year? What is like you most excited about? I'm I'm really looking into that because to this for this I, year too. I'm I'm looking into it now. You know, you you just never know when it, it, I can get the call tomorrow. Hey, the price is this much a month, and then next week you be like, 
you didn't tell me about this, you know, but uh -huh. you know, just really, that's something I really want to pursue okay. because I really enjoy the, I enjoy making juices, but I enjoy hearing back from you three days later saying, I got so much energy. My knees don't hurt no more. <laughs> what up? What were some of the best things I heard from uh, people from juicing? Uh, I, I, I had a desire to eat America's Best Wings before the detox, but I bought the detox, and now it's three weeks later, and I still haven't got my America's Best because I feel bad eating. To eat it. And I'm like, <laughs> my man. Uh, so, I mean, just hearing stuff like that, I'm like, you're changing lives. From providing them with something, providing customers with something that you not only do on a regular basis, but that you actually enjoy providing. Yeah. So... If I can provide this to a broader, you know, people, and people could come to me at that point in time, yeah. I have a bigger, you know, platform to work with, having a spot. Plus, it'd be my own spot. Mm -hmm. um, just keep, keep, keep on praying to him upstairs. Trust okay. me, it'll work. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, that's we all going to put all of our prayers and all of my mm -hmm. love and shoot it your way. That you can get it in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say thank you so much for sitting down with me mm -hmm. today. Please tell people at home where they can follow you. And if they mm -hmm. want to do, like, with your website or how you like to communicate, please let us know. Okay. So, it is ChefAnthonyEvents.com or ChefAnthonyDC on Instagram, Twitter, and all those other websites. If you want those detox juices, just send me a DM or you can go send me an email. I'll get you started. Get those achy knees taken care of, achy bones. Get that energy level up so you won't even need coffee because of that celery, lemon, ginger, turmeric, and one more other special ingredient. I can't let you know. Oh, but, man. You know. I was like, ooh. <laughs> but it works. <laughs> three-day detox. It's four juices a day for three days. Or if you are strong enough to do five, I give you six juices a day for the first two days and four juices a day for the last three. Like, you, you'll feel brand new. So. Okay, so I am here again with Chef Anthony, and he is going to... Show us about this macaroni and cheese that he was mentioning that's mm -hmm. in, you said your second book or your first book? First book. First book. So let's talk about that and what made you like say, okay, let's try to perfect this macaroni and cheese. I feel like you make it all the time. I make it at least once a week. Uh-huh. <laughs> but this is one of the original recipes that I got from my mom. Okay. So it's missing one ingredient. That one ingredient is heavy whipping cream. Okay. It's a custard that I usually use that I didn't use in this, which is heavy whipping cream, a little bit of seasoning, and an egg. Okay. The eggs was gonna hold everything together, and that's what makes it really, really gooey. But this one is like the traditional repast, church, at the church, like 4.30, <laughs> 5 o'clock type of uh, macaroni and cheese. So it's real traditional, uh, a lot of different cheeses in here. Okay. You can try it out, let me know what you think. All right. It should pretty much taste like the regular old, uh, <laughs> Family style mac and cheese. Let's talk about that. So, like, you said this is your mom's recipe. So, like, how mm -hmm. was it? You like went and said, "Mom, like, I want to make mac and cheese." Like, yeah. That's what that's what I do with my mom. No, when I was <laughs> when I first started, I first moved out. I said, "Mom, I need the recipe." So, mm -hmm. like, she, even though I watched her make it for years, mm -hmm. and she explained everything to me, and I'm like, "Okay, cool. Take notes, take notes." And I tried it with penne, I tried it with elbows. Mm -hmm. You know, it's real traditional. It's real standard. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing any type of older person event, I use it like that. <laughs> if it's any, Why older person event? Because they, this is the style that they like it. And that's why I put it in the first book. Older people like stuff that tastes exactly how they know it. They're used to yeah. it. <laughs> if I make kale, they want kale mixed with collard. They don't want just straight kale. You really? Know? They want everything to be traditional. Mm -hmm. So I keep everything traditional. So this is traditional mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. So if I was cooking for you and your friends, you guys are under 30, mm -hmm. I'm putting that custard in. If there's no custard, <laughs> I'm not making it. putting the custard yeah, in. It has to because if you'll notice the difference. Mm -hmm. This one, if I go like this, mm -hmm. you see just the cheese. Yeah. If I did it for you, you would see like this. It's like, oh, okay. like an elasticity. <laughs> and it's real like creamy uh -huh. and still um, baked. Okay. At the same time. So there's a difference between the two mac and cheeses. There's okay. levels of mac and cheese, though. I mean, I see. I'm like, yeah. you, so do you feel like that happens to you a lot when it comes to, like, people who, they may be asking for the same thing, but they kind of are looking for it a different way? Absolutely. Because really? Because even, like, you know, I cook for Caucasian people. Mm -hmm. They don't want their macaroni and cheese baked. They want it made just like this, except me making it in the oven. So okay. I bought my noodles. 
I make my cream sauce. Mm -hmm. um, after I make the cream sauce, then I'll put it in there. I'll put a little bit of light seasoning. Light <laughs> like, seasoning. Like none. Yeah, like, like almost none. <laughs> almost nothing. Almost none of the same seasoning I use in here. Just mm -hmm. a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of pepper, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's how they like it. Mm -hmm. So you just have to know your audience. You yeah. know, uh, I know when I cook for older people, I use little to no seasoning, and mm -hmm. they're just fine with that. Okay. You know, I know when I cook for people your age, my age. I can be a little more generous. Okay. So just, just knowing your audience, it, that that's key as well, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it is very good, first of all. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this is definitely something, again, but for the ones who might be my viewers. If you're younger, you want to taste a little different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, apparently for the older folks. Yeah. <laughs> and when I say older, I know older does not older. mean 50. Older means 65 yeah. plus. Okay. So that, that's where we're going with that. Okay. For older. So, for y'all, it's already perfect. You might not need anything else to it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, thank you so much, Mr. Thank you so much for bringing me this. Like, I have to go now so I can finish eating this, y'all. But y'all mm -hmm. can, like, definitely please check in. Definitely hit him up and mm -hmm. book him for whatever you have. And mm -hmm. I guess if you see him out, yep. you like this music, say hi. Yeah, call me, call me <laughs> Chef Andy. Call me Chef. Call me Tony. Call me mm -hmm. whatever you like. So, and call me for those detox juices <laughs> or any catered event. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for checking in. Story time. Who got the tea? Who got the tea? Yeah.